Hey guys, it's the Techie TV I here. I'm coming to you today with our very first um, assistive technology review from the educational perspective. So all it is is me going through the device, showing you the basics of it. Um, I'm not getting too in depth. Um, I hope in the future that as I get more devices in, that I'm able to um, make some tutorials on them. But this one, um, I've not been able to keep that long because Cheryl Soche was so nice enough to loan me this device, but she uses it um, for because she sells the devices. So I have to send it back to her so she can send it to someone else, but I hope you guys will help me thank her for letting me do this so that we can learn about the MagnaLink tab from Low Vision International um, from the educational perspective because a lot of times we hear from these people that sell devices and they don't, you know, you're like, well, what about in the classroom? What about with glare from the lights? What about um, sitting it on the student desk versus taking it to different classes? Not everyone thinks of the educational perspective because people use these devices at home and at work as well. So they may not have some of the issues that students using it in the classroom may have. So I wanted to focus just on the educational perspective for us today. And I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I edited and added, added um, some voiceover where I got tongue tied and forgot how to explain things. But I hope you enjoy the video. I hope this you find this helpful. And I hope it's something that we can do more of in the future. And I appreciate every single one of you guys that follow the website, that leave me comments, that give me feedback, um, that download um, any of the free resources that I put on there, or that have purchased some of the things that I've been putting on there. Um, I really love doing this for you guys, and I hope it's been beneficial. I hope that you're finding materials that you can use to help you, to help your students. And um, that some of the things you're finding are helping you save some time. Um, I know that we're all crunched from the time we get in our car to go to work till the time we come home. Because we have, especially in an itinerant setting, we have to go from place one to place 19. And you're getting phone calls and emails and text messages and having to put out one fire or another, or trying to find time to make it, adapt materials or whatever it is. But I'm hoping that the resources are, if they're not helpful to you now, you're at least able to know where you can go back when you're ready or when you need them. So like some of the JAWS things, I don't use JAWS with my students currently, but you never know when a student's gonna move into the county and now, I, instead of having a million bookmarks, I have one website that I created. <laughs> but I have one place to go to find the things that I find helpful. And if you have feedback, if there's something you want to see, um, I've created lesson plans for someone that asked for an introductory um, lesson plan on an iPad Pro without the home button. So I'm glad to help you guys. That's what I'm here for. That's what my passion is, and that's what I want to do with this website. I'm not looking to make money off of anything. Now, some of the stuff I do sell um, is just because I like making crafts and stickers and shirts and stuff like that. It's just something I do for fun, but it all boils down to how much I love this profession and my colleagues and how I want us to have materials that are specific to us or resources that are specific to us because that's what we need. We need to come together as professionals and share what we're finding that's helpful. And that's what I want to do with this website. So sorry for the four minute introduction. Um, enjoy the video and leave a comment. Um, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
and enjoy the video. Hey guys, I just wanted to add real quick, if you stay tuned to the very end of the video, I have shared Cheryl Sochet's information and contact information. If you're interested in the device, you can call and talk to her about pricing or um, to try out the device or have her come show it to you. And she's been wonderful to work with and um, I just can't express how thankful I am that she gave us this opportunity to learn about this device and talk about it from the educational perspective. Thanks. Hey guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, as you see, I have my MagnaLink tab set up here. I also have my camera installed in my base and I have the tablet pulled up. So first of all, you'll see that we have our um, stand. There's a large metal plate here at the bottom on my desk. Um, then we have our Surface tablet hanging from the top, I, I guess we'll say, and this does swivel so I can use the piece at the bottom middle of the tab to adjust it to my viewing pleasure. And then on the left side, we have the handle, and on the right um, is where the camera can be installed. So, the purpose of the video, as I said, is to talk about it from an educational point of view. So, looking at this device, it's fairly small. Um, I've, when I measured it, I think it was about 15 inches from the left to the right. Um, and this, as it sits here. So, um, it would fit in a backpack because obviously your handle is going to turn into the top. And it's going to be about 15 inches from the top of the device to the bottom once you've, you're holding it. Um, and it's a little bit heavier than your average laptop to me. Of course, I have a MacBook Air, so everything's heavier than that. <laughs> but, um, it's not too thick. It's not going to take up too much room in the student's backpack. And one neat thing about this is my tablet's on and my camera is powered. So, when I plug my camera into the USB port, it's ready to go. Um, I don't have to have a bunch of cords plugged in, a bunch of wires everywhere, you know, uh, cords taped down to the ground to keep um, kids from tripping over them or any of that stuff. So that's one thing I do like it. So what you see from your view in, and then the camera arm, which I'll show you in just a second, um, that's what... That's all that they have. So, um, pretty minimally invasive as far as environmental goes. Um, as I said, it's a little bit heavy. So, um, students with multiple disabilities or um, physical disabilities, it may be a little bit harder for them to um, carry or transport the device. Obviously, if it's a younger student, they may not have to move the device. Um, and it is a little bit difficult. You can see, um, it's stiff, which you don't want it to be flopping around all over the place. <laughs> so, um, it, it's a little stiff to move. So they will have to get used to that. And I'm sure over time with use, um, it won't be as hard. And my, I just don't have any muscles. So, <laughs> um, so you, we see here, we have the interface of, a Windows, it looks like a Windows computer. I think we're there to Windows 10 now. Um, and I can go into all the apps, which you see here, and it shows all the apps that are available. So I do have Microsoft Office. I've got um, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, all those things that the student might use, Excel, are already on this device. And the Surface tablet does, it's all one piece. You don't have to buy the stand and then the tablet, you buy it all together, is my understanding. Um, but if I wanted to, I can go to settings and get, uh, they call it ease of access. So I'm gonna go to ease of access 
So now it's showing me all the options for, let's see, I want to just see all of them. So here's the vision settings. There we go. Um, I can change the display. I can change the cursor and pointer to be like what I want because you can Bluetooth a mouse and keyboard to it. I can change the magnifier settings, color filters, high contrast, and do the narration for the screen. Um, I do have not used the Microsoft Narrator feature that much, but if your student is used to using a Microsoft device, um, this may be a good addition to their uh, assistive technology library, I guess. So they would have their quote unquote laptop or tablet and their CCTV all in one. And I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, but you can take this tablet out. Um, but that's that would be up to you as the TVI or the person working with the individual or student if you want to tell them that it could do that. Um, obviously, if they wanted to use it, um, they don't have to have the camera out because I can take it out and take it down. Um, and it's just as, as simple as just plugging it in. Uh, I am not going to show how to take it out because it's not my device. I do. It's a loaner device that um, I was able to get my hands on and I don't want to break it. <laughs> so, but just know that you can take it out or they can take it out if they want to. And when I say they, I mean the student. Um, or the individual that you're working with. Uh, so going back to the main screen, we have our icons down at the bottom and it is the 10th icon from the bottom left. It's an orange circle with, the, it looks like a white C encompassing the bottom of the orange circle. I'm going to close the settings window. And when I tap on it, that is my MagnaLink application. So you can see I have my distance camera set up. I'm going to pick up the camera for just a second and show it to you. So there's my distance camera. Oops. It does have, it does swivel if I wanted to look at myself, which you have to think this, I would be sitting this way. So you wouldn't necessarily be looking at yourself that way, but from the way I'm sitting, it would be looking at myself. <laughs> Not confusing at all, right? And then we do have the focus. So if I want to do near, so when I want to do distance and zoom in, I have that open. I aim it at whatever whiteboard my teacher is teaching on and I can zoom. And the OCR feature, which I'm going to show you whenever I flip this to, um, near does work distance but obviously i don't have a whiteboard in my home office so we're just going to i'm just going to show it to you from the um perspective of near so you you can like i said you can swivel this adjust it if i wanted to look at the top at the bottom whatever i wanted to do um it the camera arm is flexible, um, so if I needed to not have it at this much of a, a curvature, you can fix that to your preference or however the student needs to have it for their classroom. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera to do some near work. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to talk about this interface here in just a second. So, actually, I'm going to talk about it right now. So, on the, the application, when you open it up, you have, on the far left, we have an A 
with a double ended arrow and a camera. That changes from OCR to camera. And then we have the next button. Um, second from the left is two cameras with the double ended arrow in between and that switches camera modes. So <clears throat> I'll just show that to you real quick. We have near with the external camera. We have distance with the tablet. So at the bottom middle, we have our little handle that we can adjust the angle of our screen with. And behind that on, on the tablet is the camera. So when they're using this as a distance camera, um, you have to think about the angle. Or whenever you're using it at near, you have to think about it because when I move that, my camera's at the bottom. It's not at the top of the screen. So just something to think about. And then we have <laughs> personal view. Um, so here's my handy dandy little iPad that I'm recording with because my um, camera arm does not is not working. I need an adapter to be able to put my camera on it. So if the student needed to see their self, they were learning about their eye condition. Um, they could look at their eyes if they needed to or just anything. If the, someone's using this at home, they want to put on their makeup. Or you're talking about personal hygiene. Um, you know, you can have them look at themselves and talk about uh, what other people are seeing when they see them. Just, you get the picture. They can see this way. Um, or the, and it's using this bottom camera again. So if I have, if I pull this up, I'm going to be looking at what I say is the worst angle because you're going to be looking from your chin up to your forehead, not um, from your forehead down. So that's one thing to think about. No woman ever takes a picture in that direction. <laughs> okay, so moving on, I have near with the external camera and distance. Okay, so you have external camera and what I'm gonna call near and distance right now. So back camera and front camera, there we go, um, with the tablet. So I have I'm switched back to camera mode. I can zoom in, which is the next button I can zoom out. Um, you can also pinch to zoom, and you can pan. I have not, oops, you don't see that yet. <laughs> it says you can pan, but I have not been able to pan with my finger. Hey guys, I just wanted to add in here while I was editing. To correct myself, I could get it to pan an image, so I could move the image left to right with the gesture feature when I was using one of the cameras on the tablet, but not when I was using the external camera. So now that I fixed that, let's get back to the video. Um, then you have the OCR, which we're gonna go into the first button and the OCR button next. And again, these are touch screen buttons. It's not a physical button, it's all touch screen. Then you have um, image capture and video capture. So if the student's listening to a lecture and they wanted to um, watch the teacher explain how to do a math problem during the lecture, they could do that. Um, and you can limit to how much they record. And then the second to last button on the right is an eyeball icon with a wrench. At the top, the first one that comes up is natural color or black and white. And then we have our color options. So, so the next part of the video, you're going to see me trying to show you <laughs> the different color options. And I have a little bit of difficulty in the beginning because of the brightness setting that I had it on to begin okay. with. And I leave this in to show you how I troubleshooted to get it to work for me because, you know, we have to think about what the student might have trouble doing or you may see this video 
and your student have one and you think, you know, that happens to us sometimes, what, what's the deal? Or somebody may need this video in the future to figure out why when they're using the external camera, they can't see their text. So that's why I leave that in there. And you'll hear me get frustrated and say, I can't figure out why this is working. But you see, I just stick with it. It doesn't take very long, but um, it just came down to the brightness that I had it set on. But um, I, like I said, I thought this might be helpful for you to see how I troubleshooted to figure out um, how I did it. So here, I'm just looking at the book. I'm trying to lift it up to the camera. <clears throat> and um, I'm trying to zoom in and out. And I just have a whole red screen. So I'm, it's supposed to be red on black text. But I just have a red screen. So I'm zooming in and out. And I changed the color because I think, well, maybe it's because it's red, black on red. And I try to switch to a different color. Still not working. I change it, I switch camera mode, thinking maybe if I go out of it and come back, it'll help it, and it, obviously it's not. So I go back and I change it to natural color so I can see what is supposed to be on the screen. I zoom out and uh, I change it back to color, still not working, and I kind of tap through all the colors um, <laughs> several times. And then I hit the brightness, and that's when I finally fix it. So our first section here, when we're looking at settings, we have natural color versus black and white. I'm going to zoom out. I had to edit because my the color settings weren't working. So take number 6,000. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at my manual here. And I open my settings. I have natural color, which you can see my desk above the manual is natural color. Or I can go to black and white. Um, and then the next section, it actually looks like a contrast icon. It has a circle that's half filled in and half not. But that's my color setting. So there's blue on white. I'm going to move this up so we don't have our desk in the way. White on blue. Black and or black on white, white on black, black on yellow, yellow on black, black on green, green on black, black on red, and red on black, blue on yellow, yellow on blue, and then back to blue on white. So the student can filter through those color settings that they like. I can brighten it up or darken it up. And if you have it too dark, which was my problem. I couldn't see any of my text. I thought it was from the glare from the window that's behind the device, but it's not. It is the darkness of the screen. So um, if I go back to natural, I can brighten it or darken it however I need to. And that is one thing that you have to think about with um, these screens is the glare from the lights. In my house, they put as few lights as possible when they were building it so um I only have one overhead light but if I turn on my lamp and depending on where this is I would have more of a glare um that you can't really see it right now but when I was trying it out at night with my lamp on there was a little bit of a glare so that's one thing that you would need to think about and work out with your student is how they are going to adapt to different lighting situations with this, which I'm not trying to talk to anyone as if they don't know that already. It's just something to think about when thinking about this device for a student. And then the very last one, the bottom, just above the setting button is to mirror the image. And then lastly, we have the overall settings that shows us about, talks about that. Um, we have our application settings. Um, you can change the color options. So if you only want your student to be able to use yellow on blue, because that's what works best for them, you can um, do that. And you can do the positive and negative um, selection 
then you can this is where you can limit the recording length um, and you change how many minutes you want angle correction and then front and rear camera if you don't want them to use the rear camera simply take it off then the speech settings if I didn't want to hear Microsoft David talking or if they like a female voice versus a male voice um, or if they can comprehend better when they listen to a certain voice. You can change it. Um, change the volume and the speaking speed, re reading commands, and you can change the font to the one that works best for the student. Gestures is just like on an iPad, how um, you can pinch and zoom. Shortcuts, I completely missed that one, is if you have a Bluetooth keyboard attached. So, I'm going to show you what I have found with this device. So, I have my um, book here. I'm actually gonna switch this so you can see it as if I'm a student working at my desk. There we go. So, my distance camera, I'm gonna move us back a little bit. My distance camera is Let's see. We can't. I can't show you. It's. So my distance camera. You can see where my paper is here. Sorry. You can see where my um, paper is in relation to the tablet. So there you can see how much room I'm taking up left to right when I'm using that distance I'm the external camera, I'm sorry, for near. So, I'm going to turn it just slightly so you can see the screen. So, now we're here and I'm looking at my text. Um, and I'm going to take notes. So, I can write, I'm going to write, but like I said, we need to look at how it's going to look for the student who may be using this feature. So I'm going to switch the camera. I can do it this way. So by this way, I meant using the switch camera mode button, which is the second one from the left. And I'm also going to show you gestures. So with gestures, you use four fingers. And first I show you swapping from the left with four fingers. And then I'll show you swapping from the right with four fingers. Um, that's a way to move back and forth from the camera. So in this way, swapping from the right will get you to the external camera. And then swapping back to the left will get you to the distance camera or the back camera on the tablet, which is what I was trying to say, but I was confusing. So I wanted to clear that up so you could understand it more clearly. Another thing that I was trying to explain and couldn't is that I find the gesture feature to be much more time efficient when trying to switch back and forth from the camera. So it's a simple left to right gesture, but when I use the button, I have to flip through all of them to get back to where I want to go. So I find it much easier to use the gestures because you can go backward and forward, um, essentially, is how my brain thinks of it. I can go forward to my external camera and I can go back to my notebook. So the next thing I want us to look at is the angle of my paper. So I have plenty of room to write here. And uh, writing under a CCTV is not one of my strong skills. Um... I can write here, that's fine. But if I needed this at a different angle, you can see my book is all the, my notebook is all the way to the end of this. I have just a little bit of, you would normally have just a little bit more room because this has tabs on. But um, at the bottom right of my notebook, I have this Dumbo picture. And for me to see that with this camera, I would have to be like stretched up or what, have it at a weird angle. So that's something that you need to think about. 
um, because there's no zooming that will fix it so I can see this part of my book. I would have to move this and sit up nice and tall because you can see how the distance between that. So your face would have, the student's face would have to be over it here. And then you have to think if they're zoomed in and I'll be darned, it's letting me pan here. Look at that. Okay, so you can pan here, but, okay, I know there's no OCR. You get my point, is it's not a, always a great angle for this. Now, another option um, for my really smart people <laughs> that are thinking, well, just switch the camera. That's another thing, is to read this, I can zoom out. Okay, and I can get most of the text under here because even with it all the way up, I'm still not getting this top part of my page. All I can see is this with that, ink, with that camera being at the bottom here. Um, and so it's right there. So you can see where it's at. Um, I can take an image, but then it's going to save it as a file. I'm going to have to go back all those things so I, what i found was easier because my book is bigger than my notebook at this point um and if you had a worksheet it would be easier to manipulate you could fold it do whatever you needed to i have found it easier and more logical to keep my um notebook my what i'm writing on under here but i did want to show you that you can uh change those if you wanted to if the text was smaller it was on a worksheet and they were more comfortable writing like this they could do that so i'm just writing scribbles under that external camera um under my terrible handwriting or over my terrible handwriting um so that's one thing to look at so now we're going to switch and look at the ocr settings so i'm going to go back to the the ipad recording I just wanted you to see this from an in-person view as if you were a student trying to manipulate and use this device functionally for the classroom. Okay, so when I went over the menu, I'm sure you heard me talk about the two different ways for OCR. To process OCR for the first time, you have to hit the fifth button from the left that says OCR. And that will process what is under your camera. For many useful ROCs working with students may find that when some students begin using. Okay, so you can see from this image that it's gotten my book. The binding has shielded the cover, so I'm going to or shielded the left side of my page. Oops. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit OCR again. I processed the OCR again. When screen readers speak bad words, professionals working with students may find. Okay, so you see it started reading at the, the first text, professionals working with students may find. So, and if you can see the image that it has here, um, it has each section in a box. So that's where it's detected the text. And I, if I don't want to read when screen readers read bad words, I can simply tap on the next box. And lands how a word is spelled. Or but the you word see, I, it wasn't written. exactly where I needed to start. So I, it, I can it, back up. Add. So here's another um, troubleshooting for me. Um, I'm not as familiar with OCR, but you will see me trying to figure out what some of these words where the, some of these words are coming from and if you look at the image on the far left of the image of the o, that o, OCR is showing it's picking up parts of words before it picks up that curved text in that text box that I'm trying to actually read so it I mean it's picking up things well but I am not 
by any means a proficient OCR user. I don't have any students that use that technology at the moment, so I'm kind of rusty. But um, what I do next is I decide to take a piece of white paper and put it over the text. And I found that that helped a little bit more. So I'll let you watch that part. So I'm gonna put my hand over here, but I still wear this book. I haven't read it that much. So it's a textbook from school. <laughs> so if I cover that text up, it's still gonna pick up what's on this left side of my arm. So I'm going to take a white piece of paper and hold it there in hopes that I can just get this text in the book. Evil other text every time it encounters so that spell. Now it's starting instead of saying the word at, in question at that top box. The synthesizer could be instructed to but say But I still want it to start here. Words in the text. For example, they can see at a glance how a word is spelled or the format in which something is written. To have equal access to electronic information, you So information electronic. Okay. I'm just trying to get the menu to go away. So now I have this page that I need to read. And we want to look at options. So first, the option is the way that you're seeing the text. Um, I think starting with that image is helpful because then I can see what it's reading to me, what, what it's picked up. Um, Information. Users. And you can change it to where it's a, a line at a time, a word at a time, or you can have the image that we started with and then the word. I can change the size of the word, but then that decreases the image. Um, and this just does one word at a time. So then you can change the very top uh, after you hit settings is how it progresses through the text so I'm just going to let it read them to you um, and I'm gonna go through it twice so I'm gonna go ahead and start sentence block spell word by word sentence so the second time around I'm gonna show you what that looks like so I'm gonna go to a different view first there we go I'm gonna Zoom out. So the first is sentence. The software provides keyboard commands to, for example. You see, it went to the next sentence. Block. Block is. Was difficult to understand. Was difficult to understand. The, the user block can listen of to text. that entire line again. So you may need to teach the student how to use the block feature because I may want to. Other text every time. Um, able, 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 other text every time. I don't know. You may want to pick it up, but if we go back to our image, we can see that. So here, picking up all of this, I'm showing you that blocks, it picked up the first column to, with that block um, of text, um, that here. specialty text that was at so, the top. So. What I was meaning when I was saying you need to teach your student how to use it is that they can use it to go from block to block, but then one block may be um, in with another one, or they may need to cover up that specialty text box. Uh, it's really a learning game on how to place that book or text under the camera filter out the extra stuff that you don't need and get it to work for that student. So just because it these devices do all these things doesn't mean that you can just hand the student whatever and say, here you go, use it. Obviously, we have to teach them how to use it and we have to teach them how to use the features in the device so that if they are given a worksheet and said, well, here, you can use your CCTV with that, your Magnalink tab with that, they have to know how to adapt it. 
And now I'm going to show you, um, I hit that option button again to do spell. Spelling is just T H E R a, a letter at a time. T. So if the student didn't know how to spell the word, if they were copying it, they could T -E -T. advance that way and know how to spell it. Um, word by word. That one is every time it encountered that spelling. They needed to go back and take the time to comprehend what something's saying. They could go Instead, word by word. Um, sentence. Back to sentence. You're in trouble now. I don't talk that way. Words in the text. Um. This would be an easier way to get example, back to, to that have first. Equal access to um, electronic in the first block in the text. So if I go back to my camera, I can see. You cannot pan with the external camera from what I understand now. So the first block of that text is words in the text. For example, they can see at a glance how a word is spelled or the format in which something is written. So the OCR obviously takes some training if the student is not familiar with it. But overall, for reading distance with the camera, I, I think it's it's good. Reading near is good because I can zoom. And when I'm not set up at the angle that I'm set at, I can um, move the book around, manipulate it so that since I can't pan with the external camera, I can move my book, but then I can adjust it so that I can read what I'm writing underneath the tablet. So I like that. Um, you, the student doesn't have to keep pulling a paper in and out from here. So I wouldn't have to keep um, moving my paper, which I see a lot of students do. I can just simply have my paper underneath here. And it... You know, I know a lot of students use extra time to complete their assignments. That might cut down on a little time that they need. Um, not saying that every task is going to be a whole lot faster, but they do have the option. So, that's really the basics of it. Um, I wanted to show you it, show you what I found with it. Um, again, my main concerns are the angle of the camera at the back of the tablet. Um, and maybe glare when you're sitting in a classroom. Um, but I don't think it takes up too much space. I don't think that it would be, um, you can see. What I'm referencing here is the front of the assistive technology textbook that I was using for the demonstration. There is a girl sitting in front of a CCTV, which has the XY table to move the book around. And I'm just referencing that in comparison to the MagnaLink tab that I've been showing you. Hear how big this screen is and how much space that's taken up. Um, she may be able to write under this, but she's definitely not going to be able to do both at the same time like we would with the MagnaLink tab. So just something to think about. Um... If you have any questions about the device or um, questions about purchasing it, I'm going to leave the lady's information that was nice enough to let me borrow this um, device so you can contact her. Um, I, I do like the device. I think that every student that we work with is different. We all know that. But... I like that it doesn't have to have a bunch of cords. It's not invasive to the environment because we have all had students that they don't want to use something that makes them look different. They're going to look different with this device, but it's not cords everywhere. It's not a big, huge, you know, CCTV that they have to go over to separate from their class. They can stay at their desk. If they're com the tablet is charged, they can use it at their desk. Um... Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you it folded up. <laughs> so, um, 
<laughs> I am going to switch my camera mode. So there we go. I'm going to unplug my camera, my external camera. I'm going to take it, take my camera off. And hopefully the camera can still see this. So your your the screen is still on, so you can tell from the the options here. So I'm going to put my tablet to sleep, fold it down, and I can carry it to my next class. And like I said, it's a little bit heavier than uh, my MacBook Air. Well, it's it's definitely heavier than my MacBook Air, but maybe just a little bit heavier than um, the average laptop. You can see here at the bottom right corner, that's the hole that the external camera goes in. So I wanted to end the video with Cheryl Sochet's contact information. She works with Mountain View Low Vision Services. She is based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and you can reach her by phone at 423-763-7118, or you may email her, Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, at M-V-L-V-S dot com, or you can visit the website, www.mvlvs.com, and I am sharing her business card with you um, on the video there as well. And if you will like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you know if I update a random video that I don't put on the website. Um, I hope you're having a great night or a great day, whatever it is, wherever you are. I hope everyone stays healthy during this crazy time. And thanks again for all of your support.